Then uh, we can come or come to this now, like you know, classification of these different subsystems that are normally there. So we have seen this gross positioning that is uh, happening there. Okay, so this is a gross tracking that happens, but that is not sufficient. Okay, so um, if you see the position accuracy that we had talked about was about uh, 100 nanometer. And uh, you can imagine like no, no, no stepper motor drive can produce that kind of a high precision positioning. Okay, whatever like no fine uh, micro stepping that you you will think it can have, uh, simply because of this mechanical. Okay, maybe you think about what prevents like no the the uh, the positioning to happen so finely. Huh? See like no even if you have very fine positioning sensors available. Uh, would you be able to position like you know, by using this kind of a stepper motor um, the, the, the system, the head or the laser spot on the surface of CD within the accuracy of 100 nanometers, okay, that's certainly not possible, okay, so, um, so what we do, okay, so then there, there must be some kind of a fine tracking uh, or some kind of a fine motion system that is that will be there in, inside the CD. And uh, as we open up, then we'll 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 get get more uh, onto that. We'll observe that. Okay. So so we should look for now what is a fair, like you no know, fine tracking or fine positioning system there. Then uh, there needs to be something needs to be getting for, like the laser. See the CD surface may have some undulations. Okay, small undulations in the range of few microns. Uh, or you may put like you no know, some some kind of a small little scratch on the surface of CD. And still, like uh, it scratches uh, almost in microns kind of a dimension, but still that will be harmful for for uh, the data to be read on this from the surface. So the the surface may have some some few microns undulations, and then like you no, know, you need to kind of tightly focus the laser onto the surface from where the data is to be picked up. There must be some there there, there must be some some kind of a focusing uh, uh, servo or it is like a auto focusing that is happening inside uh, inside the CD. So there must be some kind of a small fine uh, motion that is given for focusing direction. Then we have seen this tray uh, tray handling system, tray operation system, and things like that. Okay. Now uh, and of course you need to have a CD rotation system here. So this this motor should kind of drive the CD. To make sure that it it uh, rotates in in some some controlled kind of a fashion. Mm. So let's explore a little more now. Mm. Now here again another thought that okay. So these all these pauses are where like you, know, you need to really pause the video and think about uh, yourself. Uh, don't rush through just uh, just this lecture. Uh, otherwise, like you know, you'll miss out on on things. Uh, see this thought thinking. And keep preparing your mind to get uh, to understand uh, is very very important part of the process which uh, I'm giving you the cues but I mean if you follow them only then things will happen okay so please please do that um, so now let's uh, think of uh, these two subsystems only this cross positioning system that you have already seen some part of it and then fine positioning system okay fine tracking okay how can we this be possible so suppose we as we know now we need that fine kind of a tracking there. How do you do? You, you, suppose you are supposed to do that. How would you think based on your knowledge so far? What kind of a sensors actuators that you'll use in this system? Okay. So do some thinking. You may say, okay, oh well, look, this is very fine positioning which is required. I may use piezo actuators which is, which will give you fine positioning. Okay, fine. Like no, that can be one possibility. Um, you, how would you kind of set up such kind of a drive? Pizos typically need a uh, very high voltage to operate. Okay, Do we have such a high voltage operation possibility. Um, okay, any other kind of a actuator comes to your mind which can do this job. Okay, like that you need to kind of think about. Okay, what kind of a way we we sense that okay what it is uh, really on the on the um, on the track or not on the track. Huh? So say for example, if you put a sensor 
on the on the system side here okay is that sufficient to kind of get us know that okay it is on the track or not on the track those kind of things hmm? or how do you kind of get a feedback from the from the cd surface which can tell us that so so many many different kind of questions can can come here okay so we should kind of you know based on whatever our knowledge think about these different kind of questions and list them down or like think about okay what comes to your mind as a thought to to give a solution to these these different uh, questions that are coming coming up okay um, so let's move on i mean uh, after your thinking is done you can move on okay to see uh, further now what what we open up and ch actually check out okay so so these questions you know we can have say sensors uh, for the sensors some encoder possibility or uh, you know we can use uh, make use of the track on the surface of cd itself to see if we can use that as a sensor mm. so actuation what kind of actuation you can have okay so you can have uh, some some cd rom drives have actually this servo motor possibility okay servo motors they use as actuators some uh, some others they use stepper motor as actuators mm. so things like that can be possible for cross positioning uh so again i'm flashing the same picture here so you can see uh this is from this some some view from some other cd rom drive uh and this is from like you no know, the, the the currently open cd rom drive that we are talking about so this is the same picture as as we saw so uh do you see any sensors up here for positioning sensing okay so you see that the stepper motor typically does will not have any uh, sensors that are that are needed for sensing the position okay so you observe that okay there is only like only the shaft coming out of the sensor and there is no sensor up here see typically the motor shaft we should need to have a sensor if at all the sensor is there in the system okay so either motor shaft or like you know the slider uh, moving like you know back and forth Needs to have some some slide uh, position sensing uh, possibility, but uh, if you observe carefully, that that is not there in the system. So there is no sensor in this uh, in this cross positioning kind of a system. Only stepper motor, and we rely on the steps of the stepper motor to to make sure the position uh, desired position is achieved. And then, of course, actuator is this stepper motor along with this lead screw, mm -hmm. and. Uh, this mechanism this is a way is, is useful for preventing the backlash you heard this term backlash okay see if i have only like no say for example only one tip going into the into these slots here then uh, depending upon like no this is some kind of a manufacturing uh, tolerances and errors uh, the the slot size and my teeth size may not match perfectly Okay, there will be some kind of a within some kind of tolerance accuracies, few microns kind of accuracies, it will be not matching. That means like you no know, that much kind of a uh, back and forth motion I'll have around uh, in the slot. Okay, so imagine like you know you have a hole in which there is a rod which is smaller in size is pushed, and uh, you now you can move the rod in the linear direction, any radial linear direction back and forth in the in the hole. Okay. That much kind of a you know you will see that that kind of a thing is is a backlash in the system, okay. So uh, these clearances that are given typically for like you know smooth motion happening, like will we will result into some kind of a backlash in the system, okay. So this backlash is is some problem which which uh, in mechanical systems you know you you, you think of gears will have a backlash. You think of any kind of like you know this motion transmission systems they'll have some backlash that is going to be there and uh, now what what we do here is like you know we are using these two stubs here okay which are uh, which are like you know pushed against the two opposite surfaces of the screw okay that way and then the spring is making sure that okay that is pushed and that force is maintained and that that takes care of this backlash okay that will not allow the backlash to to come into into play okay so that's how like you know this backlash is handled by using this kind of a spring loaded stuff here okay we'll see in other cases like you know when you have a gear transmission system instead of screw transmission how do you, how do you take care of black backlash okay so 
this is just to focus on the on this you know you have this uh, uh, little kind of a you know shock absorbing element here okay so this is another system like uh, this has this if you see this has only two wires coming out of this motor hmm? and then there is a gear system this is like a bevel gear system and then there is this uh, gear uh, think what what is missing in this location a okay so think about that okay what is missing i have removed something from there what it should have been to kind of like you know, can think about so that uh, the the motion from the bevel gear is transmitted to this rack here and if you observe carefully this area you see the small little spring sitting there and this rack is having like you no know, two parts the top rack and the bottom rack okay they're exactly same uh, pitch and everything but they are in the two parts like you no know, the top part and the bottom parts are are separate there okay so what are they for hmm. so think about that this uh, spring there and then top part and bottom part hmm. and what is there in this location a okay so think about this these issues this is another kind of a uh, mechanism in which like you, know, you see the same uh, the spring loaded stuff for the cross positioning system hmm. now on the guide rails okay so you you see this guiding system hmm. so uh, this is uh, um, is it like you no know, i would say one view and this is opposite opposite side view okay so this is a view from the opposite side than this side okay so say this is like uh, you know a uh, head which is seeing the surface this is a lens which is seeing the surface of a cd and uh, let me get the pointer properly okay so so this is a lens of a of a of a cd mm. and uh, you observe like you know these locations okay these are the locations where the the head is touching these rods okay this is one uh, on this side only one kind of a touch is there on this side there are two touches are there okay two places it is touching now uh, carefully if you observe okay then you will find that this touch is happening here on all the sides as you see here the rod is covered on all the sides by 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 this uh, hole okay and uh, this hole also okay but on this side there is only one support here and then that too the rod is not completely covering okay uh, the rod uh, the, the the support is only like you know covering a half side okay that you cannot see here uh, actually the cross section view actually will show you that okay maybe where somewhere we have this uh, separately open mechanism no this uh, removed from the rod kind of a thing will will be able to see see that okay but here you you presume that you no know, you you take my words that this is only like you no know, up to half of a distance now you think why this is done in this way okay again i'm i'm not going to kind of give you answer right now i want you to kind of like you no know, think about this question why this construction is happening this way only okay like that you 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 need to have uh, now you can see from the pictures only but if you have actual drive you can kind of like you know, see this main make make many of such kind of observations and then then like you know think about and come up with okay why that people have done it in in that way okay so that is where like you know our uh, like nice concepts are going to get developed mm. okay so think about this issue hmm. and you see here in detail now this again the same thing i'm saying like you no know, this is a spring here and then these two uh, racks are like you know, uh, one on the top of each other okay um okay so so lot of things to think about huh so how do you kind of like you no know, get this spring loaded rack done what is the purpose here hmm? that you think about so this is like you no know, little larger view of the same thing you can see the spring very clearly here and then there is a 
top and bottom rack and then this uh, top rack is like you no know, moving with respect to bottom rack in the direction of uh, like this uh, laser pointer and pointing in this uh, you know direction of motion of the uh, rack it is uh, they can relatively move with respect to each other mm. now uh, let's uh, think about the fine tracking okay what are the requirements what are the sensors what are the actuators mm. and uh, we can like you no know, open up and talk about that okay so <clears throat> So, the, so sensor that is used here is some kind of a photo detector here and actuator is some small kind of a little voice coil actuator that is sitting up here so 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 we'll see this uh, you know as we open up this will be evident but now we need to think about how we can create this kind of a closed loop system here so that you can have a fine tracking and fine focusing that is happening here what kind of a sensors should, will be needed what kind of actuators will be needed for that uh, thing to happen okay um, so maybe I'll, I'll leave you with uh, with a small kind of you know, actual observations and then uh, so we can remove the head from the guide rod and like you no know, start observing what is there inside the uh, head means like you no know, the optical pickup head hmm? <coughs> uh, we will start looking at so if you see the head you will find this there is this block okay which is held in the um, held by these wires okay and uh, you see these are the wires up here okay this is a block okay the block has a lens inside it so the lens moves up and down direction means this is a focusing kind of a direction okay this block can move up and down can this block get stretched front and back in this direction think about that can this block move sideways in this direction? so there are three directions it can move or it can tilt ok can this block tilt also think about that hmm. so tilting is possible or not or like no tilting of this block is possible uh, in any direction twisting is possible so, so, so you think about the six degrees of freedom any rigid body has now what are the degrees of freedom this block will be able to move into okay given the constraint that you know you have these wires which are holding this block here okay these wires are simply like you no know, some kind of a um, you know the small um, compliant kind of a wires okay as you operate them you see like you know how uh, so they, they may not be stretchable but they certainly are are bendable okay so you can see these wires uh, operating actually okay so here can you see that this is a block up here this is a lens here and then this is wires are connected to this block from inside and coming out here and getting into this small little black portion here what is there in this black portion we'll see we'll we'll, we'll think about okay uh, it's very interesting construction done for some purposes okay what is there inside the wire is you so it is the wire is not fixed here there is some small space and then wire is fixed inside this uh, um, black part somewhere at the, towards the end hmm? so we'll see why why that is done in that way hmm? and if you push the lens down you can see that okay this wire is you can see this wire like you no know, it, it goes like from here it goes and like you no know, comes here so there are these three wires that are used in in parallel and um, they are doing they are getting bent when this block is pushed down and up okay now this pushing down and up action will happen not by by somebody moving it up and down but there, there are some kind of a coils you can see here and then there is some, some magnet that is there okay so the, the coils are suspended in the magnetic field and when the current is passed they'll kind of start doing this kind of a small up and down or some kind of a sideways motions okay and that is what is kind of important for the fine positioning now think why they have like you no know, put such a kind of a mechanism there hmm? what is this mechanism uh, how this mechanism is helping us to to do the positioning with a, with a, such a like you no know, nanometric kind of a accuracy hmm? so i would leave you right now at, at this point and then like you know, we'll discuss things uh, more so so you can see this these are coils up here 
and then there is there are these two two magnets okay so, so, so this is two little dots that you see are actually a glue to kind of secure that uh, magnet in position or thing like that okay so this is the don't worry about this these two black spots are actually glue and then like you know the, you have these coils the magnets are fixed and the coil and this this lens assembly is actually moving okay so uh, i'll leave you with this right now and uh, think about now how do you kind of like you know make sense of all these uh, components together um, to to really think about okay system which will have this kind of a uh, nano positioning possible hmm? so we'll stop here for for this lecture